Hey friends, it's Laurie with the blog WagonWheelHomestead.com. Welcome back. Today we are going to be making a fresh cherry pie, an old fashioned cherry pie recipe that I know you're gonna really enjoy and we're gonna have it with some homemade ice cream and we're also gonna be making it with a sourdough pie crust. So these cherries for this pie are off of my very own cherry trees and we're gonna show you how we picked those, how we pitted them through an old fashioned pitter and then how we are gonna turn them into an amazing farm to table dessert that will be not only delicious but healthy for us as well. So come along and let's get started making the pie crust. All right, so whenever you're making pie crust, you want to use as many cold ingredients as possible. So, we are using frozen butter, okay? This is my own homemade butter from my Jersey cows and I'll link a video here to show you how I make that. So I'm just shaving it off with a knife carefully, okay? And then because this is sourdough pie crust, which by the way, you can make ahead of time and like make it, you know, for the week and have it in your fridge, you can use it for all kinds of things. Pot pies, pop tarts, pies, I mean, Pie crust is a good thing to have in your refrigerator, and the longer it sits within reason, the better it gets as far as the sourdough is because it's a little more fermented and easier for your gut to digest. So we're using cold sourdough discard, cold butter, and then we're gonna use some flour, sugar, and salt. So this is really, really a simple recipe. And I'm going to be giving you the measurements for one pie crust, okay? But I want some extra pie dough in my fridge because I want to make an apple pie later in the week, a big deep dish apple pie. I usually make them in my big cast iron pans because let's face it, for my family of seven, one little tiny pie does not go very far. So I like to make great big pies and then, you know, have it for a couple, two or three meals, okay? Because apple pie is good even for breakfast. We have a lot of canned apples in our pantry that we can very easily turn into pie filling. So it's really easy to make a quick pie for supper if you have the pie crust already made up in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna be making six pie crusts here but I'm gonna give you the measurements for one. And if you go to the blog, wagonmillhomestead.com, you can find the full printable recipe for the pie crust, the pie, and lots of other things. And again today, I'm using my trusty Bosch mixer, except I'm gonna switch out and use the cookie attachments instead of my bread dough attachment. And that's really easy to do. So you're just going to slip them on. You wanna use the metal top when you use the cookie attachments for the Bosch mixer, okay? And we're just gonna put that on, then we're gonna put this little partial lid on. And I'm gonna first just add my flour. So you're gonna want one cup of flour. I'm doing six times the recipe, so I'm gonna use more than that. Okay, so I've got my flour in here. I'm gonna add the rest of my dry ingredients, which is my sugar and salt. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of sugar per pie crust. Okay, and I don't measure, but you can. This is not an exact science. Then I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt per crust. Okay. And then the cold butter. Because you want the cold butter and the dry ingredients to combine and make small little like pebbles, if you will. This is what makes your pie crust end up flaky, is because the little bits of butter, when they bake, they make a little tiny air pocket in your crust, and that is what makes your crust extra flaky. Okay, and now that all of our butter is added, we're just gonna turn it on and let the butter incorporate with the flour and turn into little tiny pebble-sized pieces. When it's really evenly distributed, then we're gonna add our sourdough starter. Okay, and you can see now that the 
butter and the flour mixture is pretty evenly distributed. So now we're gonna add a half a cup. By the way, I used a half a cup of butter per cup of flour here. And again, you can find the recipe on wagonwheelhomestead.com. Just look for sourdough pie crust. And now we're gonna add a half a cup of sourdough starter per cup of flour and mix it together. And then we're gonna put it in the fridge to chill. careful not to over mix it okay that's the thing with doing it in a mixer you know if you do this by hand which by the way you can um, then you can feel it better but because I'm doing such a large batch I wanted to do it in my mixer so you just want to be sure not to over mix it okay so I'm just gonna put this into a covered container in the refrigerator and then let it chill Okay, and this is our old-fashioned cherry pitter. I've had this for a long time. I found it at an auction. And what you do is you just put the cherries in it. It goes two different ways. Here, let me see. The kids love this job, so I don't get to help. Go the other way, buddy. Other way. There you go. Keep your fingies back. And what it does is it takes the pits and sometimes the tops. Other way, bud. There you go. And puts them one way and then it puts the cherries in the other way. So then we'll just add some sugar and flour and make this into some cherry pie. It's really fun to do these old fashioned things with your kids. It takes a little bit longer, but it's okay. So you can get really nice cherry pitters off of Amazon. I have not used any of them, so I'm not gonna link them, but you can certainly look for some. Go the other way, Garrett. Other way. But if you look around at old garage sales and auctions or antique stores, you might be able to find a cherry pitter. And this is how they work. It's super fun. Okay. Oh, other way. <laughs> Is it stuck? Once in a while it gets stuck. You gotta. Careful. Sometimes we put too many in at one time, don't we? Okay. It's about okay. time to empty okay. our bowl, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we empty it? No. Okay, that's enough, Riata, for a minute. We're gonna empty our bowl. All right, let's empty thing it. is squeaky, it needs oiled. Dear me, we only use it once a year, of course. Okay, in the bowl. Make sure there's no tops. In the bowl it goes. On the bowl. Good job. Okay. All right. That's how we pit the cherries. Okay, it's been a few hours, and so I've just taken a chunk of this pie dough from the refrigerator and put it on a floured surface. It's nice and cold. And I'm just going to roll it out with my rolling pin. It 
It's best every now and then to pick it up and flip it over so it gets a little flour on it so it doesn't start to stick. And then you just very carefully work it from the center outwards until it's somewhat round. You can just kind of patch little spots together if you need to. You don't want it too thin. Okay, and then I'm just going to flop it over in half and then here's my pie dish. You can use whatever kind of pie dish you want. All right. And I have preheated my oven to 425 degrees for the cherry pie. Okay. And we're going to do a lattice top. I'm going to show you how to do a lattice top. They're very simple, but they look really pretty. And it's traditional to do a lattice top for a cherry pie. So I'm just going to cut off the edges. Okay. And I've already done my first pie crust. And so now we're going to get the pie dough rolled out for the one, at least one of the lattices. We'll probably use part of it for the second lattice. And then we'll roll more out if we need to. So just get another chunk of dough, flour your surface, and roll it out really quick. It does not have to take very long. And this pie dough will have all of the long fermentation benefits because it's been in the fridge for a few hours. And again, you can leave it in the fridge for, you know, several days and then just have it ready to roll out quickly for any kind of recipe that you're making. Okay. Now let's make the filling really quick. Let me wash my hands. Okay, so here's the cherries. We actually pitted these a couple days ago. I didn't have time to completely make them into pie that night, but that's totally fine. Okay, they're nice and juicy. Um, hopefully they will thicken up as much as they usually do. We will see. Okay, so into this, this is for two pies, and you can get the exact measurements for this on the blog, wagonwheelhomestead.com. I am going to put in some gluten-free flour, actually, because I'm going to save part of this off to this side for my daughter who is gluten-free. Okay, and then I'm going to put in some sugar, and a little bit of butter, and then we're gonna put this right into the pie shell, okay? on top. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit into a side dish for my daughter who is celiac so she can have some gluten-free dessert. Completely gluten-free. The sourdough is partially gluten-free. Okay. Okay, and then I'm just going to pour this carefully into these two pie shells. There's a stem the kids missed, I see. There's another one. They're gonna be eating stems in their pie. Okay. Now we're gonna cut the lattice for the top. So to do that, I'm gonna use this little crinkle cutter. Now you wouldn't have to, you could just use a knife. This is just always what I've done. Okay, and I'm just gonna cut this pie dough into strips. And they are about a half an inch wide. You can do them however thin or thick you'd like. 
it's best if they're sort of consistent throughout the pie. But if they're not as consistent, then that's okay. It'll just have a more rustic look. It's all gonna taste the same. Okay, now to do the lattice tops, very simple. You can start with some shorter ones on the side because they don't have to reach as far. And you're just gonna put it in from the edge of the pie a little bit. Okay, and then you're gonna leave a gap and put the next one. And you're gonna do that all the way across the pie. And when you get to the other side, you can use another short one if you have it. Okay, then you're gonna lay back every other one. So we're gonna lay back the first, third, and fifth, okay? And we're gonna put one of these long ones right here across the middle. And then we're gonna lay these three back, the ones that we had first laid over, okay? Then we're gonna lay back the middle two. And we're just creating a lattice. It looks really fancy, but actually it's very simple. And then we're gonna lay back the first three again. And sometimes you can pinch this off and use that piece again somewhere else. Like maybe right here, if you want a little bit right on the end, you wouldn't have to have it there, but you could. Make it look even. Now on this side, you're gonna lay back the middle two, right? Because you're doing every other one. You'll see when you start making it how it works. Okay, and lay back the middle two. Okay, then just take your knife and cut off any extra pieces all the way around the pie. And there you go. And before we put this in the oven, we're gonna brush a little butter on the top and sprinkle a little sugar on it, but we'll finish the other pie first. So we're obviously gonna have to roll out some more pie dough, but let's finish using what we have to start this one. Let's see. <clears throat> okay, put this right here. Okay, and some of these little scraps, we're just gonna squeeze them back together and get a little bit more pie dough. And the stuff we worked with, of course, is getting a little bit warm. And that's okay, it just can get a little more sticky, a little harder to work with, so it's no biggie. I've made thousands of pies in my day. I used to have a concession stand and we made pies every weekend. So I made literally thousands of pies. So you learn after a while how to deal with dough, pie dough that's maybe, that gets a little warm. It's really fun to make pies. It's very, very rewarding. Okay. And we're gonna use our little cutter again. Cut some more strips. a long one here all right and we're going to again pull back the first third and fifth and stick a long one here in the middle 
and then pull back the second and fourth and stick one in and then lay them back across and then fold back the original ones so you're just making a weave basically okay and back across to do the other side by the way if when you start working with sourdough pie dough, you feel like it needs to be sweeter, you can always add more sugar to it. You know, sugar's not that good for you, so the less sugar you have, the better, of course. But if you're not liking, you know, if it has a bit of a sour taste because you left it in the fridge too long or something, next time just add some, some more sugar to it. It's not gonna hurt it at all. I'm actually gonna stick a little piece right over here just because I have one. Okay, and there it is. And we're just gonna cut off the edges all the way around. Okay, and then I'm gonna melt a little bit of butter. I'm just gonna take this extra pie dough here and stick it right back in the refrigerator with the rest of my pie dough. And then I can use it later this week to make an apple pie or whatever. Okay, and then I just have some melted butter here. I'm just gonna very carefully brush it on the top of the pie dough. You could do the same thing if you did a full crust. And by the way, if you wanted to, you could just put a full crust on top of this pie and then just cut little slits in it to let the steam out. Or you can put a crumb top on it also. There's lots of options, but I just like to do my cherry pies this way. On my blueberry pies, some of my fruit pies, I like to do this way because they're pretty. Now I would suggest that you put this on a cookie sheet when you put it in your oven because it's probably going to bubble over. <laughs> I'm famous for that. Okay, a little bit of sugar, just some lumps in it, that's okay. Just sprinkle it on, get rid of the lumps. Okay, and in the oven it goes for about an hour and it'll be ready to eat with some ice cream. We're gonna make that next. Okay, and let's start the ice cream so it'll be ready when the pie is ready to eat. So this is my ice cream maker. It's a winter, it's just a tabletop ice cream maker. I got one of these about a year ago and I, we have used it so many times. I will never go back to making ice cream with salt and ice. Uh, by the way, ice is really expensive and it's not something I always have in large quantities here on the homestead. So this was something we decided to purchase because if we have all this raw dairy from our Jersey cows all the time, you know, this is a great way for us to enjoy it uh, in ice cream all the time. So it's very, very simple to make ice cream. You can make it in less than 30 seconds. My kids can make it. Very simple. I'm just going to show you a basic vanilla ice cream today. And then later on on the blog, I will have recipes for how you can do fruit ice cream, um, chocolate ice cream, you know, you can do any kind of ice cream that you want, okay? So what we're gonna do, this is the little insert, and it just goes right here, and I'll show you that in a minute. It's really easy to clean, it just has this little paddle that goes right inside of it. And so what I do, what you want is about three cups of cream and a cup of milk. So this is like, it says it's like a two quart ice cream freezer. I don't know, that doesn't seem like two quarts. Maybe it is by the time it freezes it. I'm not sure how they measure that exactly. Anyway, this is exactly enough for our family to have ice cream for a meal, our family of seven. So it's, it's just about right, it's just about the right amount. You can make a bunch of ice cream and put it in the freezer. Nothing wrong with that, it's totally fine. But honestly, it's better fresh. The other thing is you can also make ice cream with eggs in it. It's super good for you. I love to put raw eggs in my ice cream, but there's some members of my family and um, their stomachs are bothered by raw eggs. So just for simplicity purposes, this is the ice cream we make all the time and it's just very, very simple, just four ingredients. So I'm just gonna take my jar of milk and it's got cream down to about right here. 
I'm not gonna measure, okay, as usual, and I'm just gonna pour in until this is about three quarters full. Okay, about like that. And since the cream was on top, of course, this is mostly cream, okay? And then three-fourths of a cup of sugar. Now you can use uh, maple syrup. Maple syrup is really good, and you can just use straight maple syrup and no sugar at all. I just don't happen to have maple syrup today, so I'm using sugar. And then a little bit of vanilla. Okay, probably about a couple teaspoons. And a tiny bit of salt, like a quarter teaspoon of salt. It makes it taste sweeter. Okay, I'm not gonna stir it. I'm not gonna do anything with it. I'm simply going to set it into the ice cream maker, just like that. Put the lid on and push the button. And in 60 minutes, we will have the most beautiful ice cream you've ever seen in your life. So, I will link this in the description box below. You're absolutely gonna wanna get one of these. You can use any kind of milk, coconut milk, almond milk, you know, if you're doing dairy free, or you can get your own raw milk or just get regular cow's milk from the grocery store. This is a way to make ice cream without all the added ingredients. The stuff in the store has so much nasty stuff in it. Not to mention that it's very expensive. So this is a very wise investment. They are, you know, kind of pricey, but if you look at how much ice cream is in the store, you're gonna figure out that you're gonna pay one of these off in pretty short order, you know, and especially in the summertime feeding your family. All right, they're out of the oven, and I forgot to tell you, a lot of times what I do when you cook pies at a high heat like this at 425, if you don't want the, the edges to get crispy and brown, you just take a piece of foil and just kind of set it over there and it just shields it from getting too brown. So I did that part way through. And just taking these off. It's a good thing we put it on parchment paper because it did boil over, but it's okay because we'll just toss that, it'll be just fine. So anyway, these look really good. We're gonna let them set so that they can finish thickening and set up and let the ice cream, it'll just stay cool in there, it'll be just fine. And then we get back from chores in a little bit, we will have pie and ice cream and it'll be so good. All right, it's time to dish up our cherry pie. We made it back from doing the milk cow chores. Just gonna slice it up here. Then I'll show you that beautiful ice cream. Wish you all could be here to have this with us. Wouldn't that be so much fun? That's the only problem with YouTube is we can't actually share the actual pie. <laughs> I cut all the way through. This sourdough pie crust is just amazing. There it is. All right. Get the extra goodies here and let's hop over and get some ice cream. Okay, so I just left it on cool while we went to the barn and I think it stays on cool for like 30 minutes and then it probably quit cooling after that, but I'm sure it's still just fine. So I'm gonna just Pull this up out of here and if it runs over a little bit it's no problem you can just wipe it out okay and this just lives on my counter all the time because we eat ice cream so much now that we have it so. all right let's put some ice cream look at this beautiful soft serve ice cream it's so perfect It's really great just like it is. It really doesn't even need the eggs or anything else in it. And there is that amazing cherry pie. Can't wait to dig in. Okay, let's try it, shall we? Let's get a little bit of ice cream. Put a little bit of cherries, the sweet and sour. Mmm. 
so good. I don't know if you can see this, probably not. The flaky layers of the pie crust are like amazing. So sourdough pie crust with homemade cherry pie filling right here from the cherries grown on our homestead and homemade ice cream. You're not gonna get anything better for a summer dessert. So anyway, thanks for following along with this video. If you wanna learn more about how you can grow, preserve, and cook your own food, sourdough, home dairy, all the homestead things, be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.